Show me your prides and joy right here. Okay, so obviously we do a bunch of different kind of cars. You know, they mentioned the elephant motor over there. It's for a project. You know, we got three cars leaving today for Texas. You know, this one, uh, this Hellcat, and then there's that black red eye. So we ship them all over the place. Right on. And then we do, uh, you know, obviously Porsche and Lamborghini, all different kinds of stuff. That's Logan. Logan, say hi, this is Leah. What's happening, Logan? Hey. That's uh, Daniel and his cousin. Hi, Daniel and cousin. Yeah. Good. So they all work here, they're techs. Um, what are you doing to this Jeep? Uh, stage four R, it's like a thousand horsepower. You know, we do that all the time. Right. Basically the same you as that. that's in that one. Same yeah. as that, because it's you can run it like, at that stage it's, you know, perfectly reliable. You can run it on like Shell 93 and like, Boostane or something preferably. Sure, okay. And it's, you know, you can beat on it and it's it's fine. Um, so same thing, uh, stage four. That's like, we have like lower stages, but that's like mostly what comes in here. It's what is basically what stock on the cars is going to be able to hold up to that. Mm -hmm. Be able to take Yeah, that. so we'll upgrade whatever like driveline modifications and stuff. So I'll tell you on that car and it's, it's basically sure. the same stuff. I think I'd seen, I mean, you have an aluminum shaft. Mm -hmm. be... Yeah, I'll explain it that way. And then we do stuff obviously like this. It's like some of the, I've done like Lamborghini and Ferrari for like 20 years. So some of the body shops though, they'll, they'll bring them here, we'll take them apart and then we'll give them the panel. They'll fix the panel and then we'll put it back together. Cause this guy like scraped a quarter pan on a parking garage. So man, it's going back together. I personally have never seen a Lamborghini be taken apart before. Really? Yeah, no. I'd... Yeah, I, I no. literally just put the quarter panel back on it. I got to try to finish it by Friday. So they're pretty like, um, they're pretty complex. I mean, obviously it's, you can see like the, the strut layout and everything. I mean, it's gorgeous and it's a... Yeah, it's I'll, a, I'll, I'll, like this is my favorite car, you know. Do you have any of your own? No, no, no. I've, I don't know. I've liked them since I was a kid, so. Well, you have them weekly. You have them yeah. monthly. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we get them all the time. Um, that's what I did primarily until like the Hellcat came out. Then we kind of got like flooded. Sure. I did like GM stuff, but there's so many places that do GM stuff, that Hellcat stuff. Um, I didn't really you know, like the platforms before that. They weren't real strong, so it was kind of hard unless you redid everything. So a guy like and to have a re reliable base too, to be able to get parts from yeah. or and, and know what you're working with. Yeah, a hundred percent. I didn't even, when it, actually, honestly, when that Hellcat came out, I didn't even really know what it was. And some guy built a bunch of cars for it. He's like, I got a Hellcat. And I was like, what is this? He's like, you know, it's a Dodge Challenger. And I was like, okay, you know, and he's like, he wanted to build it. And I was like, they're not real strong most of the time. And he's like, I was like, can I take it apart? And he's like, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So it was actually, it was like built phenomenal. I was like, okay, you know, this, this is a good base. And it kind of started from there. And that was like early 2015. So we just put it out on social media. And at the time, really nobody was doing them. And people probably wanted to do stuff, but didn't know where to go. Yeah, so it kind of just like- Solid. Yep, it just kind of went from there. I didn't even really plan on it exactly. Well, and they give such a good base too, from like the cars and having, I feel like so many different crate motors that it's reliable to, to work with, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. In, in essence, of, it's not that you don't know what you're getting. And they're so mass produced now, too. Yeah. That it I mean, I had a, I had a couple platform. like in 2015 and like I had a couple like extreme customers. And, you know, so like I'd make it like eight, 850 wheel and like he wanted more. So we did race gas and then it got and then he wanted nitrous. So like it's stock. now he wants a race car yeah, so it's <laughs> stock internal. So he was doing like I think he was doing like a 200 to 250 shot on a stock bottom end. He ran that car for years. We pulled it out and put um, put a motor in it. And he ended up selling that motor to AJ, Hemi Tuner. Oh, okay. And he put that in his own car and ran it for a season. And that motor still lasted. Wow. Okay. I mean, well, that, that's... Like, tuning was like, it had to be like, obviously like spot on. Right. I was like, he was like, I was like, you're going to blow the engine. He's like, I don't keep, keep going. That's so the, he, he would run half mile events like that. And so, I mean, it's, it's strong, you know, right. um, and it's, they're relatively cheap to modify compared to like a GM because you got to do cam and all this for the direct injection system. I'm happy to see that there's a place that, like I said, reliable, because people have these cars and you go and you buy them and 
like what's the next step and like where do they go and how much more power do they want and like there's a lot of what I, what's interesting about what I get to do is I get to see a lot of the beginner steps of people like it's yeah. their first it's their first sports car purchase it's their first Dodge it's then so whether it's a scat pack or just a Hellcat and then they're ingrained and now into a culture that maybe they didn't grow up they yeah. were growing up with yeah and just like you were learning as new things come yeah 100 percent. now there's a it, I think it's awesome, a solid foundation. So let me like, let me ask you a question. I wonder about this. So like most of the cars that we do to me, like they don't feel fast at all anymore. So like with, with what you do, do any of these feel like remotely fast or does nothing feel fast? Can, you know? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I will say it does feel fast. So I drive uh, just a stock Hellcat as my daily driver, okay. a 2017. And I like to rip around in that, but yeah. then once I got, in that one out there, which we haven't named yet. Yeah. Um, the first thing that stood out to me were the initial shift points. And like, I felt like I was in a race car yeah. and I can, and I may be able to hear the whine much sooner and louder and very distinct. Okay. So you're used to driving a Hellcat in general. Yes. Then, okay. So it, I kind of, so it's almost a little unfair of a question because I get, but it's like compared to like a top fuel car. Oh yeah. No, there's like, nothing. It's pfft. yeah. I mean, that, that's <laughs> like the difference. I'm like, everything must feel like, a Mazda Miata driving like that. Well, know. I think it's it's a lot different because in the fuel car, I am so mentally and physically prepared for that initial four Gs of, at the launch. And then as you accelerate 250 feet down the track and the clutch starts to come one to one with the motor, you actually reach six to six and a half G forces by the time you get to half track and then you're actually on the D cell. Um, so when you're amped up for that and you're prepared for that, a, you know, you're not in that mindset when you're driving, you're going to work, you're going to school, you're, okay. you're doing okay. something. That's interesting. So it's a, uh, you do have to kind of turn the switch on and off uh, to some degree, but because you're in such a different atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I do practice at the light all the time Yeah. and there's no car I can get in that would even remotely be yeah, because you're going to, you know, spin the tires, yeah. but it, what it does do with the fuel car feeling that acceleration and inertia gets me more prepared for when I do get to drive a fast car on the street Yeah. to where a lot of people unfortunately are very unequipped yeah. to be able to take these awesome machines out and they don't know how to handle that power. So when I'm like foot manage power of a 12,000 horsepower vehicle, yeah. it actually does correlate to feeling of the car and the tire and yeah. the grip and, and being able to project on turns. And it just, it does help, but they're literally such different planets. Yeah. I was wondering about, you know, I'm like, cause they'll, I'll take somebody for a ride and it's like, I've done, you know, so to me, it's just kind of like the same thing. And it's it, like, it feels slow to me and they're like, Oh, that's fast. I'm like, I guess I'm used to it. And like, I can't imagine for coming from like your perspective, well, you know, like, there's feeling like cars like it like literally the fastest accelerating cars on the planet you know compared to any production car even modified that has to be you know this huge it's the biggest difference in the world but there's a fun factor that comes into driving a high high horsepower vehicle on the street in a dragster everything must be so perfect i mean from how i do the burnout to clutch engagement to brake pressures everything there's no room for uh there's no room for fun with it it's okay. a very purpose built vehicle and has to be collectively with their team into the tune up what you do. Like, I mean, no breathing on the throttle or anything. So when I get into a fast car on the street, I'm like, this is fun. This is not to say a toy, but you're relaxed, you, you're, you're relaxed and, and you can, you know, feel how, you know, how much RPMs you need before you can turn a tire and have fun, different burnouts and, and, and feel a vehicle. And, it is the playground for a high horsepower where I don't get to play. Yeah. It's so serious. Yeah. Um, so, and I, and I really haven't driven that many street vehicles um, with high horsepower. Really? Like, I mean, besides off the track. Yeah. So I still, even as a car enthusiast that I am, enjoy every time that I get in. So I think it's the mindset. Yeah. No, that's interesting. Wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that perspective. That's pretty interesting. I do like it. That's why I'm like, what am I? I think I'm going to get a red eye this winter. And uh, I'm like, all right, that's, I, the, I'll, I'll, I'll come and bring it to you. I, I, <laughs> lo I love the red eye. It's like, it's it, like compared to the, what year's your Hellcat that you got? 17. Okay. Yeah. Like in 18 and up, like it's the, the, as far as like the onboard and the handling and stuff, it's drastically different. You know, I did, I, it was kind of in progression. It's not till I get one that's like an earlier one. 
and then get back in and I'm like, oh wow, this has really progressed a lot, you know? Every, every two we, or three We just years. sent to like a 2015 to Vegas Monday. And it's been a while since I've drove one, you know, that it, and it is drastically different, you know? Okay. Um, yeah, they, I think, I think it's just a cool car concept, you know? I think so. And they've created such a base too for not changing the body styles yeah. in a big way for a long time. Like I was a advocate of, like, I like new cars, but if you're going to change a body style every five, six years or something, yeah. and your car becomes, if you have that mindset, becomes obsolete. Yes. So where yeah. Dodge, I feel like, and like when they came out with this, uh, with track the, the track hawk. Dude, we get so many of these things. It's like, it's like a whole different genre of people get this, they, you know? They're the ones that probably never thought that they had a lifestyle to have high horsepower. Yeah. And then they needed like now, a, They needed like this practical car. And it's, you know, I remember when I, one of the first ones we did was I, that a black one over there. It's like a Demon Hawk one. I think I told Boomer, like I was driving it and I was testing like out on the road, it was nighttime. And it's, it's pretty fast. And I passed up a cop and he was sitting there. And I was like, oh, you know, I shouldn't say fuck. Um, <laughs> so I immediately let off and I'm merging with these other people and he like whips out, but he doesn't have his lights on. And like he comes up to light, you can tell he's like looking around trying to figure out like what car it is. Right. And well, like he's just sitting there looking around and I have the windows up there tinted. Like he's like, well, there's no way it was that. That's you know? awesome. <laughs> like that thing don't sound like that. Well, if he knew. So I'll just show you, you know, real quick, you know, Demon. Um, we get a bunch of those. Um, McLaren, Ferrari, Maserati, Porsche. So when you get a demon, what's the number one ask that you get with them? Like, what do they want? They, they already have a demon. They, they want, want the same, um, they want the same basic, mostly times stage 4R, you know, so they'll, they'll want anywhere from like a thousand to 1200 wheel. Okay. Pretty okay. much, you know, and then unless we do like a, that's why we, we came up with this four link system. So obviously with independent rear suspension, like it just, at that power level, you can't put a tire underneath it. So I came up with like a four link, a live axle four link, where you unbolt the rear subframe and bolt this in place. You don't have to cut, weld, or modify the awesome. car. And then you have a four link where you can, you know, set up anti-squat line and everything. So that's it. And then we ship them all over the place. Uh, Kuwait, About, Canada, uh, uh, pretty much everywhere. How long would it take to put that four link in uh, like for a customer, like what's the turnaround time? The I four guess. link is like really, I mean, we can put the four link system in a car within like a day and a half. Oh, awesome. You know, so some guys have a demon and they don't want to like void the warranty or do anything like that, which is understandable. Absolutely. And so like, that's something that can drastically improve the performance of the car, um, whether it's like road course or however we set it up and it's totally reversible. Like you can bolt your subframe back in and nobody has any idea you ever did it you know that's, so guys that just want faster track times but they don't want to mess with the motor that's like a good option and then i feel like i'll be coming in for that yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it, it the system in and of itself takes out all the weak links so the as far as like the differentials breaking and all that stuff it's encased in the enclosure so structurally the the, the independent rear suspension is basically just holding fluid okay so the whole encasing is you know clamping it down so the load is distributed over the whole unit. Oh, wow. okay. So your the stock differential, all that stuff, as far as braking, it's non-existent, you know. So you don't have to worry about it. It's a plug and play. Yeah, it's it's. It is. You you put your stock differential, stock axle, stock hubs and brakes on it, and bolt it in, and off you go. I feel like the security that that brings to a car owner is yes. something that I don't want to say money can't buy, but I mean, it's the right way to do things. Yeah. And it does make the car safer because obviously the biggest deal to get people in trouble is traction and they're not used to a car with that much torque. Right. You know, so they lose it. So, you know, it, it does make it faster, you know, safer rather. More manageable. Yeah. So we can go out and look at, look at this car and I'll kind of just tell you like what we do. And it basically goes right in line with all the stage four R packages, you know, that we do. And that's just kind of like I, I try to go about it in a way that was like each different stage added like power, but like, you know, also whatever the weak link of the car is. And I do that on like all of them. So, you know, um, they don't pin the crankshafts for whatever reason. So I'll show you like what we did for the dream giveaway car. So obviously, you know, Boomer, uh, he went about as far as like cosmetically and obviously did a ton of stuff to the car. 
Um, and we'd worked with them on a previous red eye, so they wanted to do something you know, over the top power wise. So we did our stage four hour package. Um, so we basically put brisk racing spark plugs in it, um, lower degree thermostat, modified the computer for tuning, and put an ATI crank pulley on the bottom, a 10%. And then we basically, so it's actually that first elephant motor. So it's the, the, the pulley that we use is the exact same pulley that's on the elephant motor stock. And then we clearance the timing cover and modify it and it's exactly looks exactly like the elephant engine so I mean, you've got it you've got it beefed up yeah so we, naturally i mean in, in in a proven case it's ready yeah. to be able to take everything and we do that first so we can pin the crankshaft since that's a potential okay. weak point um and then we do we have custom headers made that are like by american racing header that are two inch primaries and then um, high flow cats obviously if it's going to be driven on the street uh, and then we actually use the stock cat back so it sounds like this with the stock cat back Okay. And I mean, I, I, I heard it and I thought it sounded amazing, but I wasn't sure what was on it. So that's, that's, that's our, that sound. that's our headers and high flow cats. And then honestly, the cat back doesn't restrict any power until you're over a thousand wheel. Okay. So, and it sounds good like that. Um, and then stage four. So then we modify the blower. Um, we don't ever just do the pulley itself because the inside of the supercharger needs to be modified. I think they get a bad rap online as far as the superchargers breaking, but nobody's modifying the inside of it. Sure, you're always going to find a whatever yes. the next weakest link on anything, on any type of car. Yes. So, so what are the blower mods? So we take the snout and we port and polish it. Um, initially, we tested before and after back in 2015, and it flowed a lot more. Your inlet pressure went down, and then as far as like your intake air temperatures, um, they actually improved a lot just by doing that. So the Elephant blower, um, it has a different snout on it that is a casting and okay. inside it looks exactly like the ported and polished snout wow so i casting to be able to yeah look so they and they can't port like that yeah so they can't port and polish everyone so they just made a casting to kind of duplicate it um so the drive pins they use like eight drive pins but they're kind of soft so we put hardened drive pins in them and stronger bushings um modify the clutch hub deal in there so it doesn't build up excessive heat and then um use a pulley this pulley is from grip tech um so we use that one or we, we We'll make pulleys that are matched to the belt grooves. Sure. So, you know. Um, Absolutely get no slippage and. Yeah, and on this one. 10, 10 groove? Yeah, 10 grooves, so stock, uh, stock, you know, stock belt, you know, width. Um, Joker's performance, Brett, he owns Joker, so he did this whole blower thing. So this is his race pack. Um, so he has like a billet bearing plate and stuff like that. And he actually did the coating. So that's not typically something that we normally do. Okay. Um, you know, he had, he brought the car over and he had all the cosmetic stuff done. It had this black and orange theme. He had the cat on the side. So I asked him, you know, I was like, hey, while we're doing this, do you want to do something like custom with the blower? And so they kind of came up with some stuff and they came up with the cat claw design. Well, I mean, ultimately this is, this is a custom vehicle. Yeah. It's all custom works that you specialize in. Yep. But this particular car for Dream Giveaway, whoever gets it is going to have a one-off. Yes, we want to do something that like, cause he already had like the, as far as like the covers here, he had them black and orange and you know, the blower is just silver. So it sort of looked out of place with the whole theme of it. Sure. So they came up with the cat claw deal. And so Brett did this. Um, it took him probably like three times to get this cause the top of it is the eggshell shape. So it's really hard to get a line. Sure. And so that's actually like, I don't remember exactly which one, the, either the black or the orange is Cerakote and the other's powder coat. So I think powder melts at 400 and Cerakote's at 300. So they had to do this. It took him a few tries to get it, you know, but he finally, I think it turned out really good. Um, and it goes along with the theme of the car. And then um, this is our catch can crankcase breather system, you know. Um, it has got, you know, clean side separator on both, you know, both sides, so every, you know, there's no, you know, it's bulletproof no matter what. You know, the system flows pretty good as it, as it is. And then, so we did a drive shaft from drive shaft shop, uh, aluminum. Um, and then we braced the differential. There's a, okay. there's a two piece, there's a two piece differential brace on the back. So one half bolts to the case and it's billet. So the case gets stronger. The other piece bolts to the subframe and then they're connected with a bushing. Awesome. And it's, and the bushing is in line with the pinion angle. So you're bracing like a triangular manner. Then we'll put a brace on the front, the same type of thing to just, you know, bring like a triangulated brace in the front half of the differential case. So that that's also yep. stabilized yep. as well. And then we did all like uh, billet control arms in the back. 
Um, the, so the main reason why the differentials and stuff break are, are wheel hop, which because the control arms flex, you know. So the actual com like the differential and the drive shaft, they're not. They could be stronger, but they're not as bad as they get a bad rat for. You know, most people will go, they'll put drag radios on it. They don't know what wheel hop is. They go to the track, they hit it, they don't let out of it, right. and you boom, it snaps something. So we do billet control arms in the back. They're fully adjustable. Um, company uh, AAD provides those. Okay. So they're, they're really nice. And they're already set up where somebody, if they want to do like a 15 inch rear wheel later on, uh, we have billet spindles and those arms already work with them. So they don't have to redo anything. Oh, that's awesome. And then we lowered it, you know, just for aesthetic, you know, purposes. And that's pretty much it, you know. And then, have you have you driven it all yet? Or you I still got so I did. I got to drive it here from Dream Giveaway to, okay. come, to come and meet you. And so, Florida's a little bit of a funky place. Not yes. A, not a lot of places to really yes. yeah. feel the power that this car is capable of. But what I noticed, I mean, immediately the most was the initial power that you get at the hit and the tune that you have in it and the shifts and the whine yeah. of this blower and, and that the pitch of it, I feel like is higher. It comes on sooner. It screams for more. Yeah. So yes. it's a very addicting car. And uh, I mean, it, kudos to Hellcats in general, yes. but so, this is an entirely different, different beast. And when you, when you get a chance to drive it, you know, go through the different drive modes and you'll feel so like each transmission mode is tuned independently of each other. So like you can put it in street and it's to me very conservative, you know, it's just sure. real soft. Um, sport is more aggressive and track is like very aggressive. I had sport coming over here okay. because I wanted to just be able to be in the intermediate and I knew we were not track, we were going to take turns and such, but I yeah. can't wait to. Yes, yeah, so a track, the transmission shifts much harder. It'll anticipate, you know, if you you know, barely blip the throttle and automatically kick down to a downshift. You know, it's anticipating you getting ready to race somebody. Right. And then street is like regular car. Like it's soft, you can't even hardly feel it shift, you know. And yeah. we set it up where the valet mode or, or the black key still works. You know, we just limit it to six pounds of boost regardless of the modification, so, I'm not you sure know. If they get the, they're giving the black key with this. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Uh, Depends who the winner is. I feel like we should. <laughs> yeah, norm <laughs> normally nobody cares, but we do have some, and they're like, you know, I want to let uh, my son drive it, you know, or, you know, my wife wants to drive it. She's worried about it. So you can use the black key, and it's still just like a stock car at 500 horsepower. So very manageable. So, you know? even, so even with everything that you've done to it when it has the black key it is just still yes at five six. so every every car we do we try like we have to do we have to keep it where every single feature works on the car so like no check engine lights every single it's just like it came off from the dealer like that so that that's kind of our and always our goal stay in play. Yeah, like so the obviously some of this will limit from from dodge and then so we offer a warranty okay. you know, on everything that we do to try to offset that you know, but as far as that's a win-win situation right there. It's a full encompassing yes uh, protection package. Then. Yep, and we have really no problem. Like I said, the basis of every mod is like, how can we make it more reliable? Like, what are the weak links on the car? So let's fix that in order where the, it can make more power with you know not being hard on the car. So as far as like warranty stuff, it's it's very easy. We you know we don't really ever have any issues. You know, it would have to be a defective part more or less. So what did this turn? The dyno. Um, this is around between all of them are between 830 and 850 wheel. You know they vary roughly around that. And this will run. This is on Shell 93 octane, and they're putting a Boostane Professional, like so, okay. like a half tank. And that, that's more or less. You don't have to run that. It's just if you're so getting. For, if you care about your vehicle, if you care about yes. your car, and then you want the, yeah. the highest performance. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So the VP one works really well, and Boostane works really well, because um, you you don't know at the pump if it's actually 93 or they mix the gas wrong, you know, sure. so. That's it, a reliable source. Yes. Shell is going to. If it's a car that's 600 horsepower and above, um, it's dependent on the octane. You know, if it's a Toyota Camry, it doesn't matter. That's it, really. I think somebody's gonna be super happy that wins it, obviously, you know. I mean, I'm I'm jealous. I, I can't enter to win, but I definitely, most definitely would. Yeah. And I'm clearly, I'm very impressed with what you do in the how thorough you are and how you care about not just making power but keeping power yeah and keep and, and we get we get a, a we get a ton of cars in here that are fast and have a lot of power but they're constantly braking 
or they run really good at wide open throttle, but it drives like shit around town. You know, and that's like a very common theme that we have to fix or remedy all the time, you know, which doesn't really make the car fun. You know, it makes yeah. it a headache. It's a, absolutely, aggravating. Yeah, yeah. And so you, you'll get a chance to drive this and you'll be able to see, like, it's literally, it should be just like it came from Dodge, you know? On steroids. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> much, much faster. <laughs> Well, awesome. Well, thank you for giving me the rundown. Yeah, thanks for coming by. On this, I'm I'm stoked to go and rip it. I think we're gonna go to somewhere that's safe to go give it everything it's got. Right on. Well, thank you. Okay. No, so thank much. you, thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, we're gonna Glad. have some fun. Okay.